What is up guys, in today's video I'm going to be going over my Fortnite settings. I've had a lot of comments recently asking what my settings are or what settings I recommend in Fortnite. So today I'm going to be going over all my Fortnite settings and explaining why I use what I use. Even if you try these out and don't like them, understanding why I use a setting or why I don't use a setting can be really helpful to you. Even if you, like I said, don't want to use my settings or are already comfortable with your own settings being able to see the explanation could give you a different perspective on it and maybe change your mind if you guys do enjoy this video or find it helpful informative whatever remember to give it a like subscribe if you would like to see more and comment down below which controller you use xbox controller or playstation controller i'm interested to see what you guys use because personally i use an xbox controller but i know a lot of you probably end up using playstation controller so comment that down below we're going to start off with graphic settings if you're a console player this won't apply to you because i don't think uh console has performance mode but i do use performance mode and then i use high meshes just because i think it's much easier to see through them like when wood or brick is fully built you can see through it much easier and i think that's like quite helpful whereas with low meshes you can't see through the builds at all toggle sprint i have on auto open doors i have on mantle activation hold jump yeah i think hold jump is the move there hold to swap pickup i have off toggle targeting i have off mark danger when targeting i have off auto pickup weapons i have off Preferred item slots, we'll go into that in a moment. Auto sort consumables to the right. Reset building choices on. Disable pre-edit, I have that off. I don't like the pre-edits. If you use pre-edits, that's fine, but personally, I never had a use for them. Turbo building, I have on. Confirm edit on release, I have this off, but if you like confirm edit on release, it's fine. I just like having it off so I can have better crosshair placement and just being able to confirm the edits is fine for me. If you're struggling with your keybinds and you don't really know what you want to use, Maybe confirm edit on release can be a good setting for you because it frees up a keybind, but I will go into my keybinds later on in this video. Contextual tips I have off. Invert view off. I don't know if any of this matters. Tap to search slash interact. I have that on. That's a nice setting. You want that on. <clears throat> so now let's go into the confirmed I uh, preferred item slots because this is something I see a lot of console or controller players struggle with, and that is going to be how they set up their inventory. You want to have shotgun in slot one like this because if you try to take someone's wall, and then swap to the right, you're going to be on your slot one, regardless if you were on slot five before or slot three before. I'll try to have a clip showing what I mean on screen now, but you want your shotgun in slot one because when you try to take walls and then swap, you're going to be on shotgun. So I arrange everything around the shotgun, essentially. I want my SMG to be one swap to the right of my shotgun. So we put SMG in slot two. I want my shotgun to be one swap to the right of my assault rifle so we put the assault rifle in slot 5. I like having whatever my utility item is one swap before my assault rifle so if it's a sniper, if it's shockwaves, spider-man in the past that goes in slot 4 for me and then heals goes in slot 3. This is the inventory setup I've been using for a long time and I really like this and this preferred item slot setting is nice when it ends up working there are some situations where it just doesn't. Um, I don't think any of this matters because I have most of it default. Gyro aiming, I do not use. If you like that, that's fine. Personally, I think it's kind of gimmicky and it's just not something that I'm going to use. I don't use keyboard. Now we're going to get into controller settings. Controller auto run. I don't know why I have this on. I should have that off. That's, I'm happy I made this video. What the heck? Why do I have Builder Pro build immediately off? That is crazy. I don't know how long I've been playing with that off, but I felt, all right, whatever. You want this off, I think, and you want this on. I don't know why my settings were like that. Edit hold time, I have set to minimum. Slide hold time, you're going to want to get this set with your controller. So you want your slide hold time to be as low as possible to the point where you don't accidentally activate it. And for me, that's 1.08. Um, I don't use whatever this is. Reset camera time, I don't use that. I think this is like gyro settings. All right, sensitivity, build mode, I have to at 2.1. That's what I like. Edit mode, I have at 1.6. Use advanced controls. And then I play 40-40, horizontal and vertical. You want no boosts because I am going to be using linear. And if you're using linear, you want the boosts off. If you have boosts on while you're playing linear, it makes it feel more like exponential and you lose kind of the whole point of linear. The whole point of linear is that your, your sense is really consistent and you start with your max sense all the time and it doesn't have to ramp up. I have another video on linear versus exponential that would be linked down in the description below. But I use 4040 and then 1111 ADS. I use a pretty low ADS, but I'm really good at beaming people across the map. One of the main disadvantages of using a low ADS is it can be somewhat hard to make adjustments, but you kind of get by this with like snap aiming, like un-aiming down sights and then moving your crosshair a little bit and then re-aiming in. You'll see me doing that a decent amount when I play. 
and that's why I do it. And then also strafe aiming, like left stick aiming, moving your character left or right to compensate for moving your crosshair a little bit left or right is usually more accurate at range. That's something that a lot of Fortnite players don't necessarily know, but it's it's really popular in other shooters. So if your aim is a little bit off to the left or a little bit off to the right, moving your character to adjust with that, especially for long range assault rifle fights, is going to be the way to go. And I feel like that's one thing that kind of makes it easier to play on a really low ADS is having good left stick movement or good like strafe aiming. And it really is beneficial with guns like the MK7 and the AUG. And then I play linear with look dampening time set to zero. Dead zones, it's going to be preference. In my opinion, you want dead zones as low as possible without getting stick drift. And for me, on this controller right now, that's 1210, but that's going to change depending on your individual controller. So, like I said, the rule of thumb, in my opinion, for dead zones is you want them as low as possible, but you don't get stick drift. Once you start getting stick drift, you need to turn it up a little bit, and you need to, like, find that nice middle ground where you have it as low as you can without getting stick drift. Audio settings. Um, one interesting thing here is that I do not use... Where is it even at? Visual audio. I don't like visual audio. If you like visual audio, that's fine. Personally, I find it really overwhelming, and I'm good at using sound to my advantage anyways. So, I don't think I lose much without having it on. And I play with people who have visual audio on, and at times I feel like I am more aware of what's going on than they are, and I know where the enemies are better than they do just based on how they play the game when I'm like spectating them. So that's why I have visual audio on. If you like it, that's fine. It's a good setting. It does help a lot of people, but just personally for me, I feel like I play better with it off. Um, and then for my keybinds, I play claw. So... My keybinds are weird. If you don't play Claw, you probably don't want to copy my keybinds. There will be some things with editing that you might want to copy. But if you're not a Claw player, some of this is not going to be ideal for you. As a general rule of thumb, you want to be able to aim and do things like jump, build, edit. You just want to do as many things without taking your thumbs off the analog sticks. And that's like the rule of thumb with keybinds. If you play Claw, then you can hit all of these AXBY buttons without taking your thumbs off the analog stick. And that's why I play claw. I use Y edit, X reload, B switch mode, A jump, right stick crouch. I use sprint on the map button. So this button here, I don't know if you guys can see it. This button here is what I use map with right here. Um, it's kind of weird to get used to at first, but that's just what I put it on. And I can hit it with my left thumb. Uh, and I, like I said, I can take... Like, while pushing my left stick forward, I can hit it with my left thumb, so I'm able to use that without taking my thumbs off the analog stick. I know a lot of people have been struggling to find what they want to bind sprint to because they use the analog sticks for other options. That way, they don't have to take their thumbs off the analog sticks when using them. Yo, what just happened to my keybinds? What? Everything got unbound. Or I was on edit. That's why. Okay. That was confusing. Um, and then I put my map on the D-pad, essentially. That's all I changed was map used to be here. I put sprint on that button, and then I put map on the D-pad. Previously, I didn't have sprint bound because I used sprint by default. But with the new sprint, you have to actually have a bind for it. Uh, build controls, I don't think there's really any in anything interesting here. I use right stick, change material. That way, if I need to change material, I don't have to take my thumb off the analog stick. Um, but if you use right stick for something like jump, like a lot of people do, you won't be able to do that. And I don't know if there's anything else in the build controls that would be interesting. Edit controls are where things get really interesting. So I use Y edit, I use right stick reset, and then I use LT confirm. My opinion on editing is the main thing you want is you want to be able to reset and confirm without taking your thumbs off the analog stick because you have to use the analog stick for the edits. And if you have to take your thumb off the edit to confirm, you're likely going to miss your shots after you make an edit. So you want to be able to confirm and reset without taking your thumbs off the analog stick. And then you also ideally want them on different fingers. That way they can be done in quick succession. If you're doing like triple edits, for example, having them on different fingers just makes it way less likely that you would mess up, I think, and actually makes it way faster than if you have one finger doing multiple things during that operation. So for me personally, I use Y edit. So my right index finger hits that. I use right stick reset. So my right thumb hits that. And then confirm I have his left trigger, which my left index finger hits. So if I use like Y edit and then X reset and B confirm, just for example, my right index finger would be doing all of that. So it would be way less, it would be way more likely that I mess up. And it would also be like, I, it would be slower most likely since one finger has to hit every button. Whereas if you have each action on a different finger, it makes things a little more fluid, I think. So that's the main thing it comes to with editing. You just want to have edit confirm and reset on different fingers ideally and you want to be able to do all of them without taking your thumb off the analog stick i don't think any of this matters um so 
yeah, that's going to be it for this video. If you guys did find it helpful or informative, remember to give it a like. Subscribe if you would like to see more. Comment down below which controller you play on, Xbox or PlayStation. And yeah, I hope you guys found this helpful because a lot of people did request this video.